Oh, Father, we sit in heaven, glory and honor be unto thy name. And thank you for this wonderful time, again, that uh, we may be able to share in thy word, Lord. We love thy spirit to be with us, Lord, to guide us in all truth, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome once again. This is uh, number five in the series the three angels messages of revelation chapter 14 and uh, we are looking at uh, the presentation babylon is fallen i pray that uh, the lord will uh, teach us today and uh, remind us of the things that uh, we want to learn that they may make an impression in our hearts and only not making impression that uh, we may be encouraged and be able to speak truth in love and to reach out to others who uh, are still in darkness. We have gone through four presentations so far. We started with why the three angels messages and uh, we looked at uh, everlasting gospel then uh, we were looking at fear God, number three, and in number four, worship him. And if you have missed all this, then uh, you can go on my timeline and on our YouTube channel, The Gospel Sounders, and you'll be able to get these uh, presentations that we have done in the past a uh, few days. And so I want to welcome you to this presentation, Babylon is fallen what is god trying to speak to us when he says babylon uh, is fallen uh, this is uh, the second angel's message if you will that announced the fall of uh, babylon but uh, let me try and give uh, a short background about babylon itself God planted the Garden of Eden in the east and placed Adam there to tend it. And uh, Satan, through his sophistry and subtleness, came and deceived um, Eve, and she committed sin by partaking of that which God had forbidden. And so, from the book of Isaiah, we find that uh, the main purpose of Satan was to overthrow the government of God and sit on the mount of congregation and be above the stars of heaven. He wanted to control everything. And so when he could not do that in heaven, the warfare was turned on earth. And at the place where there was the Garden of Eden, when the flood took it away, uh, Satan started his sender there and through Nimrod he set up uh, a city in rebellion of the direction of God that they should scatter to the four corners of the world and so there he started his kingdom uh, through Nimrod and there Babylon started there and uh, uh, it is principles have been carried uh, forward by different governments and then we find that uh, we had the ancient Babylon where Nebuchadnezzar ruled uh, at the same place that was the Garden of Eden. And then it is principles were passed to spiritual Babylon, which we know it is uh, the, the Roman, the imperial Rome, the Roman uh, uh, kingdom. And so uh, God announced that uh, this kingdom will fall it will not continue and god can speak out things before they happen because he is a god who sees in the future and can be able to predict in accuracy what will happen and so the second angel's message tells us that babylon is fallen babylon uh, is uh, fallen what does babylon mean what is 
meant by it is being fallen what is fallen uh, mentioned twice in, in the book of uh, uh, revelation these are the things that uh, we want to look at as we uh, uh, as we go through this presentation that uh, babylon is fallen these are some of the things that uh, we are going to look at and so the definition babylon what is the definition of babylon we find that uh, babylon it is the chief city of ancient mesopotamia and capital of the ancient kingdom of Bab uh, babylonia derived an adjective babel hanging gardens of babel tower of babel and i told you it was just built where uh, there was the ancient garden of eden and a noun babel genesis 11 1 to 11 a tower built by noah's descendants probably in babylon who intended to reach up to heaven God fooled them by confusing their language so they could no longer understand one another. Noun Babel, Abibal, and Babul, a confusion of voices and other sounds. So, when uh, God is talking about Babylon is fallen, He's talking about this confusion uh, uh, being cleared and not having a place. The, it is dominion being taken away, and uh, we read that uh, in the book of uh, uh, Daniel chapter 7. I'd like to direct you to the book of Daniel chapter 7. The book of Daniel uh, chapter 7. This is what uh, we read, that Babylon shall fall and shall not rise again it is dominion shall be taken away daniel chapter 7 uh, verses 26 and 27 this is what we read uh, it says but the judgment shall sit on the day of atonement and they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end and the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. So all this confusion, it will reach a time that they shall have no power. God will bring them to an end. And we are living in that period where God wants to work out his way in the life of his children and so comparing daniel chapter 7 and revelation chapter 13 verses 14 about the fall of this babylon we read in daniel chapter 7 we have three beasts the lion the bear and the leopard verses 4 to 6 and in revelation 13 and 14 we have three beasts uh the leopard the bear and the lion 13 2 we have beast with ten horns in Daniel 7 7 in 13 1 we have a beast with ten horns we have the same beast arrogant little horn in uh, Daniel chapter 7 verse 20 and then we have an arrogant beast in Daniel uh, Revelation chapter 13 5 saints persecuted in Daniel 7 25 saints persecuted in 13 7 he reigns for 1260 years and in 13 uh, also we find that uh, three years and a half God's judgment is set up in Daniel chapter 7 verse 9 worldwide proclamation of the message uh, proclaiming the judgment hour is come and then number seven institution of God's kingdom then uh, Revelation 14 14 to 6 return of Jesus so we are doing this comparison that Babylon is fallen it's not going to be able to stand for uh, ever this is what we are being told actually so physical babylon versus the spiritual babylon in the book of uh, second kings chapter 24 verse 10 we find at that time the servants of nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came up against jerusalem and the city was besieged revelation chapter 13 verses 7 say and it was given him unto him to make war 
and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with a, a great uh, admiration. These are the comparisons that uh, we are having about uh, the ancient and the spiritual Babylons. And so at the end of the day, just as this uh, ancient Babylon did not survive, so even this spiritual Babylon will never uh, survive. Continued on. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I'll show unto thee the judgment of the great war that, that seated upon many waters. After establishing that uh, uh, the ancient uh, Babylon gave birth to a spiritual Babylon, we find that in Revelation chapter 17, this kingdom shall receive a judgment from God himself. This kingdom shall receive a judgment from God. It has often been charged that the Catholicism, that Catholicism is overlaid with many pagan in Christians. Catholicism is ready to accept that accusation and even to make it her boast, the great God, Pan, is not really dead. He is baptized. The story of Catholicism, page uh, uh, 37. Also, in Revelation chapter 17, verse 9, we find, and here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven said are seven mountains on which the woman seated. This woman that is spiritual, Babylon, seated. We are told that this is the mystery. Babylon the Great. It is written on, for, on, for her, on, 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 on her forehead. And then in Revelation chapter 7, 17 verse 9, we find that this Babylon sits on seven mountains. So getting the identity of the spiritual Babylon is not difficult because God has given us everything we need to know and identify this uh, kingdom. And we find that Rome is seated on the seven uh, uh, on the seven on the seven hills. The seven hills of Rome, Italian settle are uh, uh, called Roma. The seven hills are Aventile Hill, uh, Celian Hill, Capitoline Hill, Esquiline Hill, Palatine Hill, Quirinal Hill, and Vin Minol Hill. Rome, which ruled from 168 BC to 476 AD, Rome ruled the world in Jesus' day. Luke chapter 2, verses 1. Remember, we are looking at Babylon is fallen, fallen, is fallen. The penetration of the religion of Babylon became so general and well known that Rome was called the New Babylon, faith of our fathers, 1917 uh, edition, Cardinal Gib Gibbons, page 106. And uh, uh, this is what uh, we read once again. Daniel 2, 37, Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power and strength and glory. Revelation 17, 17, verse 38 of Daniel 2, And whatsoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the falls of the heaven hath he given un into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of God. Babylon was referred to as the golden city, so appropriately it was represented by the head of gold in the image. Babylon ruled the world from 606 to 538 BC. Ah. Uh, In Revelation 13, 2, we find that, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And there were given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindred and tongues. And so we find that uh, what was happening in the ancient Babylon, it is what is being represented happening in the spiritual Babylon. 
Isaiah 13, 19, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child, this excellent they shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. We are talking about Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Isaiah 13, 20, it shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch turn there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. Now, this is the fall of the ancient Babylon. But there is something interesting that God speak about this ancient Babylon, which is um, the Roman power, uh, in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 18, talking about this fall of Babylon. Look at uh, Revelation chapter 18, verses... 21 to 24, the fall of this Babylon, Revelation chapter 18, verses 21 to 24, it says, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great milestone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. The ancient Babylon had been overthrown long time ago, but God is speaking of the Babylon in the end time, how it shall fall. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. And so there is... Uh, economic fall in Babylon, there is uh, the spiritual fall in Babylon, and there the, the is the fall of everything in this Babylon uh, uh, in the book of Revelation chapter 18. And so uh, we are in this period where we are seeing that uh, the kingdoms of this world that have relied on their own powers are to be overthrown. They are going to be taken uh, down by God himself. And so Isaiah chapter 21 verses 9, Isaiah chapter 21 verses 9, this is what we read. It says, And behold, he cometh a chariot of men with a cup of horsemen, and he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven image of her gods he hath broken unto ground. So the Lord promises to uh, uh, dash down these images of, uh, of Babylon. And so you can see her idols and the worship of the relics and the worship of the saints and all this kind of, uh, 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 of the things that she do. The Lord is saying soon they will come to an end. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. And so when a kingdom sets itself up to provoke the Lord, what the Lord does is to overthrow this kingdom. When we talk about it is fallen, it's fallen. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12. Isaiah chapter 14 uh, verses 12 we read uh, about uh, uh, the devil wanting to ascend and uh, uh, just take over the kingdom of god how art thou fallen from heaven O lucifer he did not continue to live there son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nation Hosea 14.1, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thy iniquity. So Babylon is going to fall because of her iniquity. She wanted to exalt herself. 
but at the end of the day she'll have no place in the kingdom of god revelation chapter 13 verses 2 to 7 this is uh, uh what we read and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and we have read this and his feet was as the feet of the bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion and the dragon did what gave his power and his seat and great authority so the power of babylon comes from saturn and we have been just told how art thou fallen from heaven the same way he fell from heaven and thought to give the powers to the kingdom of this world at the end of the day he shall fall and there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them he thought to fight the government of god but he was overthrown and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nation remember the three angels messages goes to all kindred and tongues and nations and then babylon is fighting against all kindred and tongues and nation and because the message goes worldwide her fall also will be worldwide Daniel 2.37, Thou, O king, art the king of, king of kings, for God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. Revelation 17.17, 17, For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And when the words of God are fulfilled, what happens? Look at um, the book of um, Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17. Uh, and uh, verses 16. Revelation chapter 17, verses 16. The fall of Babylon. Here we read the scripture says, and the tents which thou sowest upon the beast, this shall hate the war, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So, even those who have been colliding with her, there is coming a time when they shall come against her. Babylon shall fall. And so, this uh, power that. Uh, uh, gave Babylon it is uh, 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 this entity that gave Babylon its power we read of uh, it in Ezekiel 28 17 thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness I'll cast thee to the ground I'll lay thee before kings that they may behold thee and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldean excellent shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. So this power gave Babylon, uh, Satan gave Babylon its power. He was overthrown. And just as he was overthrown, so even the power he gave uh, to this kingdom will be overthrown. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyre, thus said the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though uh, thou set thine heart as the heart of God. The Lord himself shall bring him down. 13.6 And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and then that dwell in heaven. 4.30 The king spake and said, Is it not this great Babylon that I have built? for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty so there is a lot of similarities between the ancient babylon and the neo babylon you find that their principles are same why are their principles so similar because the one who gave uh, them power is the same here is the neo babylon sitting like God in the temple, having the four uh, creatures as if it was the four angels, the living creatures that surround the throne of God. And uh, 
I'll go over this. We are told there is still a greater fall of Babylon yet to come. We find that um, when the angel, uh, when the angel talked about the fall of Babylon in Revelation chapter 14 verse 2, it was depicting the churches who had rejected the message of uh, the first angel and then they became Babylon. It was not talking about the Roman Empire because that church had fallen long time ago. But we are told there is still a greater fall of Babylon yet to come in Revelation chapter 18. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, Revelation 14, 8. This is the fall of the Protestant, the fall of Protestantism when they rejected the first angel's message and they did not step into the most holy place. Revelation 17, 5, mystery, great, uh, mystery, Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Here we are told Babylon is described in Revelation 17 5 as the mother of harlots. Now in Revelation chapter 14 8 the great Babylon of Revelation 17 had fallen a long time ago and she just she is just a mother to the uh, apostate Protestantism that fell in 1844 when they rejected the first angel's message. So, uh, if the church is the chaste woman faithful to her husband, then Babylon is the opposite. That system of worship that is unfaithful to God has a mystery religion and teaches and practices abomination. The hallowed daughters must then pre present those churches that follow her false teachings and subject themselves to her rule or even once officially accept Rome's leadership as authoritative. Rome claims to be the mother of all churches. As the entrance of St. John Later, uh, Lateran Cathedral in Rome, there is a huge Latin inscription, uh, Sacrosa Sanctica uh, Lateranensis Ecclesia Omnion Ubis et Obis Ecclesiae in Materi et Caput, which translated into English reads, Sacred Lateran Church, Church Mother and Head of all the churches of the city and the world, Catechism of the Catholic Church. The Catechism of the Catholic Church calls the Church Mother and Teacher. The Dominus Jesus or Jesus Faith Declaration says it must be always clear that the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Universal Church is not the sister but Mother, the Mother of all the churches. Dominus Jesus, August 6, the year 2000. And so the religious groups that met with the Pope. You, you see how the world is aligning itself on this side of this apostate, uh, apostate uh, religion. And all the world wandered after the beast, Revelation 13, uh, 3. You can talk about the Lutherans, the Greeks, the Russians, the Serbians, and the Belarusians, Orthodox churches, the Methodists, Baptist leaders, Jewish rabbis, Six Muslims, Hindus, Shitos, Taoists, James, uh, Zoroastrian, Agnostic, and Atheist all are accepting this mystic religion. First Corinthians 16, 6.16 What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an Ahalot is one body? For two saith he, for two saith he shall be one flesh. So anyone that is joined to this mystic a religion shall meet the end of this mystic religion and uh, we know how that uh, this uh, uh, religion was uh, against the saints and uh, persecuted them and instead of walking in truth they walked according to their own creeds and persecuted those who held the bible as the rule of faith in the end time it is not uh, a religion or uh, uh, it's not a war against religion it is a war against a uh, uh, bible faith and uh, uh, the doctrines of men and so while uh, the whole world is wondering 
after this beast, the Christian should ask themselves, what is the end of these kingdoms of this world? We read this in uh, Two Babylons by uh, Alexander Hills, uh, Hislop. Babylon was the primal source from which all these systems of idolatry flowed. When you think about um, the Tower of Babel, when you come to the gardens, the hanging gardens of uh, the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar and his idol worship, and when you come to the current Neo Babylon, the Roman hierarchy, the Roman power, and all this mysticism and all this system of worship, they have their source in uh, Babylon, the ancient Babylon that was at Mesopotamia, and the devil is the one that planted that Babylon. And so we are seeing that uh, in Ezekiel 8.13, and he said to me, turn again and you will seek that abomination and that they are doing. So, so he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house, and to my dismay, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. And who is Tammuz? First of all, if we talk about Tammuz, Tammuz is supposed to be the son of uh, the son of Nimrod and uh, uh, the wife Semiramis. And it is so gross that uh, the people that belongs to the church of God were worshipping Tammuz, the son of Nimrod and Tammuz. When the Lord had said that uh, his children should obey his commandment and they should have no other gods, the people were worshipping other gods. But remember, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. There shall be no candlestick. There shall be no voice of the bridegroom in Babylon. And even though God has his people in these fallen churches, they have to receive the three angels' messages and come out of this uh, false religion. They should come out of this uh, false religion. And how does this false religion uh, uh, thrive. How does it thrive? We are told this. We are told uh, in the great book, the great controversy, through the two great errors, the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring the people under his deception. While the former lays the foundation of spiritualism, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome and remember, Rome is the Neo-Babylon. It is the spiritual Babylon. And so the, the true principles that Babylon thrives on is immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness. And so all the religions allied to these two doctrines, immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, they will not stand, they will fall. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. They cannot stand because they are not standing on the word of God. And so the, the, the doctrine of uh, immortality of soul, this doctrine can be traced through the muddy channels of corrupted Christianity, a perverted uh, uh, pagan philosophy. This is a uh, certain uh, uh, bringing in his superstitious idolatry to uh, uh, deceive people that the dead are not dead. And you find that uh, all religions have bought into this absurdity that the dead are not really dead and they can speak to uh, their living ones. They can tell them the things that are happening and all that. And we are told that you shall have no other gods. And so if you have People who are dead purporting to be speaking to you. This is spiritualism. This is obeying the voice of another. And whoever you obey, that is your God. And so we must decide today, can we continue in this falsehood? Can we uh, 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 support such errors of idolatry and uh, 
such as errors of uh, uh, being involved in mystic religion. So Babylon is fallen. Is fallen. So in Revelation chapter 17, this is what uh, we find that um, mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And so when we read Revelation chapter 18, we are told, we hear a message, come out of her, my people. Why should you come out of her? Let us read. Let us read why we should come out of her. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1 to 3. The Bible says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having a great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are works rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So Babylon is fallen because it has become a hold of every foul spirit. And so we are told, flee from Babylon and save uh, your soul. Flee from Babylon uh, and uh, flee from Babylon and save your soul. And so, um, who, if they will be saved, must come out. The people, if they are, uh, we read the first justification of the woman is in her being called out of Babylon, the harlot. When judgment is about to fall for apostate Christendom, Babylon is not to be converted but to be destroyed. In every apostate or world conforming church, there are some of God's invisible and true church who, if they will be saved, must come out. And so, if uh, we will be safe, we must come out of everything that involves Babylon. Now, I'll put something on the screen because this is interesting when we say Babylon is fallen and people should come out. Some of us think that uh, it is just Sunday sacredness and immortality of soul, but uh, we are told something that uh, we should be able uh, to heed if we will be saved from uh, the coming catastrophe. Look at this about coming out of Babylon. This is so interesting because we are being told Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And we must know why it is fallen so that when it falls, we are not part of them that fall because we have the truth. Look at this. Complete separation. The command found in Revelation 18 for come out of how my people means to come out of those institutions which will place in the minds of our young people principles which are up to make them join the class of worshippers of which we read in 2 Timothy 3, 5, having a form of goldness but denying the power thereof. As faithful watchmen, we should be just as desirous of getting our children out of the popular schools as we are to call the older people out of the popular churches. The popular churches, hear this, are what? Only a product of world education. So to get at the root of the matter, we must separate ourselves from that which creates the condition in which all the religious world at present finds itself. Now you, you, you ask, how will we come out of this world education and institution? Now, I, I'm not here to answer that, but uh, I'd like to show you uh, the education amongst the ref uh, among the reformers. We are told this, the early reformers realized that they could not hope to succeed if their children were educated by Roman Catholic teachers. 
Luther says that the Bible must be studied, teachers must be provided, schools must be established. He felt that to strengthen the reformation it was requisite to work on the young, to improve schools and to propagate through Christendom the knowledge necessary, a prof necessary for a profound study of the Holy Scriptures. This accordingly was one of the objects of his life. He saw it in particular at the period in which we have reached and wrote to the counselors of the city of German, calling on them to found Christian school, History of the Reformation, Book 10, Chapter 9. And then the early reformers found out this is education in the formation of the beast and image. Because we are talking about Babylon fallen and us coming out of Babylon. The early reformers found it necessary to have their own courses of study, textbooks, teachers, methods, principles, etc. They separated themselves completely from the popular schools of the day. It required what? This is key. It required courage and faith in those days to take such a stand. And it will require even more courage and faith for those who are preparing for translation to take the stand which the testimonies are pleading for them to take. They knew that if their children should go to the schools where popular education was given, they would receive the mark of the papacy or the beast. Those who are living up the light at the present time will see even more clearly that if their children continue to go to the popular schools, they will receive such a principles as will compel them to assist in the giving life to the image of the, to the beast. Anyone who has a knowledge of the third angel's message and who will take the trouble to examine the studies and methods of the popular system of education can see that the books are filled with those errors which will oblige those who are receiving the education from them to take the dreadful step which will bring upon the world a religious and civil darkness greater than has ever been known before and so what is the solution complete separation getting our children out of the popular schools as we are to call we should be desirous to get our children out of the popular schools are we as we are desirous to call the older people out of the popular churches now brothers and sisters this is this is serious matter because we are talking about babylon is fallen and come out of her my people we cannot be true protestants when we will drink the wine of babylon the wine of Babylon has made all the nation drunk. She has disregarded the commandments of God. She has given false uh, education. She has given a false Sabbath. She has brought in the immortality of soul. She has brought in the controversy in clothing. She has brought in all these things. And she is divorced from the word of God completely. We are not to be converted in Babylon but we are to come out of her if we shall be saved so the lord is calling us that at such a time as this that we are living in but we must rise above what is the popular customs of this world because the lord is saying that all these systems that does not that do not adhere to my commandments i'll bring them down as we finish we are told this the spirit of world conformity is invading the churches throughout christendom robert atkins in a sermon preached in london draws a dark picture of the spiritual declination that prevails in england the truly righteous are diminished from the earth and no man laid it to heart the professors of religion of the present day in every church are lovers of the world, conformers to the world, lovers of creature comfort, and aspires after respectability. They are called to suffer with Christ, but they shrink from even reproach. Apostasy, apostasy, apostasy is engraven on the very front of every church. And did they know it? And did they feel it? 
there might be hope. But alas, they cry, we are rich and increased in goods and have need of nothing. This is Laodicea. The great sin charged against Babylon is that she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This cup of intoxication which she presents to the world represents the false doctrines that she has accepted as the result of her unlawful connection with the great ones of the earth. Friendship with the world corrupts her faith, and in her turn she exerts a corrupting influence upon the world by teaching doctrines which are opposed to the plainest statements of the Holy uh, read. And so we we are told flee from Babylon and save your life. Rome withheld the Bible from the people and required all men to accept her teachings in its place. It was the work of the Reformation to restore to men the word of God. But is it not too true that in the churches of our time men are taught to rest their faith upon their creed and the teachings of their church rather than on the scriptures? Said Charles Beecher, speaking of the Protestant churches, they shrink from any rude word against Christ with the same sensitiveness with which those holy fathers would have shrunk from a rude word against the rising veneration for saints and martyrs which were, they were for starting. The Protestant evangelical denomination have so tied up one another's hands and their own that between them all a man cannot become a preacher at all anywhere without accepting some books besides the Bible. There is nothing imaginary in the statements that the creed power is now beginning to prohibit the Bible as really as Rome did, though in a subtler way. When faithful teachers are expound the word of God, there arise men of learning ministers professing to understand the scriptures who denounce sound doctrine as heresy, and thus turn away inquirers after truth. Were it not that the world is hopelessly intoxicated with the wine of Babylon, multitudes will be convicted and converted by the plain cutting truths of the word of God. But religious faith appears so confused and discordant uh, that the people know not what to believe as truth. The sin of the world in penitence lies at the door of the church. The second angel's message of Revelation 14 was first preached in the summer of 1844. And it then had a more direct application to the churches of the United States, uh, where the warning of the judgment had been mostly widely proclaimed and most generally rejected, and where the declination in the churches had been most rapid. But the message of the second angel did not reach its complete fulfillment in 1844. The churches then experienced a moral fall in consequence of their refusal of the light of the Advent message. But that fall was not complete. As they have continued to reject the special truth for this time, they have fallen lower and lower. Not yet, however, can it be said that Babylon is fallen, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. She has not yet made all nations do this. The spirit of war, conforming and indifferent to the testing truth for our time, exists and has been gaining ground in churches of the Protestant faith in all the countries of Christendom, and these churches are included in the solemn and terrible denunciation of the second angel, but the work of apostasy has not yet reached it is culmination. And so, as we stand, uh, as, uh, as we are standing at the threshold of everything, there will be a sounding uh, of uh, the fall of Babylon and uh, let us see this, how it shall be sounded in the book, Great Controversy. In the book, Great Controversy, I'm reading the last things. We are told that uh, this scripture, Revelation 18, 1 to 4, let us pick it from Great Controversy 603.1. I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins and that ye 
receive not of her plagues. Revelation 18, 1 to 4. Then we are told, this scripture points forward to a time when the announcement of the fall of Babylon as made by the second angel of Revelation 14 verse 8 is to be repeated with the additional mention of the corruptions which have been entering the various organizations that constitute Babylon. Since that message was first given in the summer of 1844, a terrible condition of the religious world is here described. And remember, when it was given in 1844, it was not given with a loud voice. But now when it is given again in Revelation chapter 18, it is given with a loud voice. In 1844, they had not fallen completely. But now in the end time, the times that we are living in, they are fallen completely. With every rejection of truth, the minds of the people will become darker, their hearts more stubborn, until they are entrenched in the infidel hardihood. hardihood. In defiance of the warnings which God has given, they will continue to trample upon one of the precepts of the Decalogue until they are led to persecute those who hold it sacred. Christ is set at naught in the contempt placed upon his word and his people. As the teachings of spiritualism are accepted by the churches, the restraint imposed upon the carnal heart is removed, and the profession of religion will become a cloak to conceal the basest iniquity. A belief in spiritual manifestations opens the door to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and thus the influence of evil angels will be felt in the churches. Talking about um, the doctrines of the evil angels being accepted in the church, reading the last statement in the Great Controversy. Uh, this is uh, so interesting that... Uh, I'll read some two, two things which are, we are told that we should watch out at uh, the end times. That is uh, Great Controversy, page, um, page, uh, page uh, 593.1. Page 593.1. Talking about, um, uh, I want you to see this, that uh, the devil himself uh, is come down with a great power and he is about to, call, to deceive people in a, a very great way. Look at uh, this. The last great delusion is soon to open before us. Antichrist is to perform his marvelous works in our sight. So closely will the counterfeit resemble the true that it will be impossible to distinguish between them except by the Holy Scriptures. By their testimony, every statement and every miracle must be tested. So, Babylon is going to work ingeniously as even the serpent worked in Genesis chapter 3 so that he may deceive the whole Christendom. But the, uh, the people of God will be able to stand because they know the testimony, they know the Scriptures, what it says. And the last statement, we are told this. These are things that are should encross our mind. These are things that are to hold up our mind. Great Controversy, page 588, paragraph 2. This is the statement that I'm reading lastly. As spiritualism more closely imitates the nominal Christianity of the day, Remember, Babylon thrives on the immortality of soul, which is spiritualism, and then Sunday sacredness. As spiritualism more closely imitates the nominal Christianity of the day, it has greater power to deceive and ensnare. Satan himself is converted after the modern order of things. Read and listen and the watcher. Can you hear? What inspiration says, Satan himself is converted after the modern order of things to deceive. He will appear in the character of an angel of light. Through the agents of spiritualism, miracles will be wrought, the sick will be healed, and many undeniable wonders will be performed. And as the spirits will profess faith in the Bible, and as the spirits 
will profess faith in the Bible and manifest respect of the institutions of the church, their work will be accepted as a manifestation of divine power. I'm praying that when Babylon falls, we may not fall with it. Things are going to happen in this world that you have never seen. They are starting to happen. I want us to be anchored in the word of God. And if we hold fast until the end, then the reward is for us. May the Lord be with us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we see how the world is filled with commotion, economy, fall of moral standards, deception, bold robbers, and people filled with demons killing each other, Lord. We see that this world is coming to an end. We want to have Christ in our hearts. And as men are following after the fashions of the world, we want to have Christ formed within the hope of glory. Help us not to be ensnared by these things. Help us to fix our eyes on Jesus Christ who is the author and finish of our faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.